Hey there, a video by Link Cabin. I know it's great, great, great. So today we're going to be looking at WordPress and a vulnerability that I found. I actually got a CV and I'm really happy about it. Totally haven't overdid it on social media. On Twitter, when I got it initially discovered and released, I couldn't stop talking about it. So if you have me on Twitter, I apologise. But I did get a CV and I'm quite happy about that. Um, so the reason why I chose mo uh, WordPress is because obviously it's used by millions of sites. It's an interesting content management system that a lot of people use, even governments. And so I thought, hey, what's the worst that could happen? Now I'm not here to go, oh, this is so shocking, this security, we've got to get rid of it. Because we're past that point and that's not what this video is about. It's about the technical aspects of the cryptography of WordPress in a certain feature. So it's more about the technicalities in this video. We could, I guess, in the podcast talk about it. But anyway, for now, this is me simply discussing that. In the previous video though, I just want to discuss this comment. Didn't really think I'd see that in my YouTube channel. Not upset by it, just... A bit confused and scared, I think is the word that I could put. I, you know, I when I first initially saw that, I was a little bit taken aback. I'm not, I'm not used to, yeah, that was, it was different. I had a different day. It, yeah. So, this is a vulnerability in Motorsite, and why, why did I do this? Well, um, I was doing some work for the, the Insinia, the, the security company I currently work for, um, and I was having a look at WordPress and seeing the actual default installation and I see default because obviously you have to enable multi-site, but as in uh, you, you you don't need to have a plugin to have a security vulnerability in that that sense of the word of default. Um, and so that is my decisions, I guess. Um, and th this PowerPoint obviously is a little bit old. Discovered a vulnerability in WordPress 4.61 isn't true. It's actually 4.7. They didn't release that. I just basically I discovered it first, made a PowerPoint, and then they released 4.7 with the vulnerability in it. It's fixed in the security update 4.71, so that's good. Um, yeah, I initially got this September last year, 2016. All good. Um, essentially, multi-site is where you can have multiple domains and sites and blogs into one place which is great for people that have multiple blogs multiple businesses or you want to have um, multiple people in different areas but still have some central hub for you to be able to control them that's great can be used for big organizations like I say some really interesting features to it um, you can restrict user signups by email domain that's really important in this vulnerability because it basically bypasses this. The vulnerability essentially allows for impersonation and also bypasses some restrictions if they're on, on the features. Sounds pretty snazzy, sounds pretty jazzy, but actually it's a little bit boring. It's non-critical. That's how I described it in the blog post. It's non-critical because it is a vulnerability, but it's not as harsh as it seems. So, so the vulnerability steps would be to register with a whitelisted domain, and you could brute force this. So essentially what I'm saying here is that they have turned on the restriction for user signups, which is by email domain. And you could guess that it's the blog. If it isn't, then you can simply brute force or do some social engineering to find that out. That's the first part. While registering, take note of the time, because time is important in this vulnerability. This is used to generate a token, which we are going to be guessing. I basically said the vulnerability already, but anyway. Generate different MD5 payloads for the activation key that we get, the token. And then, well, it's a key token, I'm saying the wrong words. But yeah, essentially the activation key gets sent to an email, doesn't it, for you to sign up. Um, and we can try and guess that. Send requests until we are accepted because there is only a small amount in certain situations that um, allow us to be accepted or enable our activation key. Now you may think, oh, an intrusion detection system might bring this up. What happens if we send multiple post requests on different pages with similar sort of uh, requests? So I'm basically shading away activation key brute forcing. So there's there's discussion over that as well. How is this really done? Because I've talked about it in a high level vulnerability steps, but what does it actually entail? Well, the key generation we is weak in the WordPress installation. It essentially, this is from the actual WordPress 4.61, which is exactly the same as 4.71. I've actually got a sign up blog and I think I say here, um, no, I don't. It's okay. So the, the blog and also the signing up of the user is um, vulnerable to this. But as we can see, um, time is used. Basically, we are using the time, not micro time, very different. 
RAND and the domain that we're using to sign up to a blog. And we're using the MD5 algor hashing algorithm and we're using the 16, we're truncating part of it. Problematic because some of the, well the majority of this is very much guessable with few requests. The big one is RAND which we'll move on to later. The interesting thing is the time is everyone will think oh well what happens if the server is at a different time? Well in the HTTP spec you actually have to give the time as we have seen here on the england.nhs which I've decided to show here as an example. Um, you have to give the date in the HTTP spec. So there's always servers with that. Um, the vulnerability steps for RAND is quite interesting because this is obviously the hardest part to exploit because it has a wide range or does it? Because Windows servers doesn't have that ability to have a wide range. It goes from 0 to 32,767. Um, so if you have an XAMPP server or you just have a server on Windows which has a WordPress installation, you don't get the same luxuries as a Linux installation. Now you may think, well that's fine, a lot of servers now just run on Linux, that's how it is. Well also RAND is, is on the PHP documentary, documentation found not to be safe in, in crypto sense. So it isn't the best of ideas for the WordPress development team to be using this in a cryptographic sense. Um, all of which, the, the lack of diversity in WordPress is a problem, and I think I can bring that into a different video because um, I have a lot to say about that. But in a summary, RAND, the function from PHP, is guessable in certain conditions. There is a lot of discussion over RAND. I, I mean, we could talk about it all bloody day, um, but I'm not going to. MD5 also shouldn't be used. Uh, for obvious reasons that I've talked about in this channel. Not a major thing though in this because they still do use MD5 in this. Um, and I do also discuss in my blog on this vulnerability that um, an interesting thing about MD5 being the default while the password generation, um, hash the password hashing has a sort of um, flow of the best possible security to the uh, best compatibility. But um, if you want to read more, you can go onto my blog, it's jack.cc. Um, a lot of people have problems with me saying that and understanding that. Hopefully people got that. Anyway, so yeah, Rand is obviously problematic at this. Uh, we can fairly guess this um, quite easily if we can identify it as a Windows server. As well, there's some discussion over Linux is essentially the summary there. And then the domain, which is basically the quite easily... the, the the part that we can derive quite easily. Um, and I, I did a little server lab to understand. I used Windows, obviously, but I weakened it a little. I actually added some time to it. So I put plus to minus two seconds to sort of make it a little bit more real. Um, because I was doing this in a virtual machine environment. I was instantly going to know the time in a certain way. So I sort of had to give it some leeway. Uh, one test only required 14,000 requests for acceptance. Um, so if you had a DDoS, if you did a DDoS attack to evade or try and hide the obviousness of what you were trying to do, 14,000 requests really isn't that major in today's game of denial of service. And I've got it highlighted there. Obviously, it's actually 13,978 if any of you want the exact figures. Um, and to be honest, a lot of this you don't really need to know about. It's, it's pretty boring. It's just me generating tokens and showing the estimated time that is the, yeah that is the vulnerability that is essentially what it is a little walkthrough hopefully you guys enjoyed if you did give this a like comment down below and subscribe for more um maybe i'll find more vulnerabilities in 2017 i don't think so because i got my project dissertation so um <laughs> probably not gonna happen but you know plenty of interesting things happening in security nowadays and hopefully i can provide more content once I leave university, um, because it is this year. Thank you for guys for watching, and I'll see you guys in the next video. Yeah.